Part 3, the 7P method for creating products. Now we're going to be applying the 7P method to your existing purchases. So we're talking about the same subject, which is how to monetize all of your existing internet marketing purchases that you have on your hard drive. Now the method is a variation of one that was discussed at a recent JVZoo conference. And one of the presenters there actually came up with a way that you can actually create a product and get in front of people as well as to get attraction from affiliates. And so what this is going to require, and we're going to be talking about the seven P's and I'm going to introduce them to you now, is practice, personalize, profit, proof, plug, product and persuade, and promotion. And we're going to get into individually what these things mean. We're going to do this in two parts and we're going to talk about the first four right now. Now let's talk about what it means to practice you should really be able to use what it is that you have. So one of the ways that we're going to turn one of these products that we have is to be able to actually use it, to become an expert, to become good at using it for the purpose that it was actually intended for. And of course, as always, your goal is going to be to get a result. Even if the product is one of instruction, it's one of software, your goal, your ultimate goal is going to be one to get a result that not everyone is able to get. Maybe your goal is going to be to get a number of new leads. This is going to be something that's going to be attractive to other internet marketers. Maybe it's going to be more sales or maybe you're already getting sales. Maybe you're going to be able to do it in less time. You're going to be more productive in what it is you do. And of course, as is the case, you don't have to worry if the method doesn't work exactly the way it was proposed in the original product. What you want to do is go through your process and work through the problems because working through problems is actually going to be a good thing because this is what's going to make it your method and it's going to make it a unique product. So from practice, we go to personalization or personalize. So what we're going to do now that we have a method, we have it working, we're able to get a result. We want to then start making tweaks based on our own intuition. We want to start thinking about ways that we might do the process differently. And we're going to take different methods and different paths to try to get to the goal that we have. And again, remember what's important here is going to be our goal with that product. We're going to test different conclusions, just as you would do in a scientific method. You're going to test hypotheses. You're going to ask different questions that you don't see covered in either the manual or the tutorials. You're going to ask over and over, once you're getting a result, what if? What if you tried something different? What if you wanted a different result? What if there were different scenarios? You want to ask the kind of questions that you have that maybe were not covered or were not necessarily directed in the actual intent of the product. You then want to start developing your own resource list. So as you develop your product, you want to think about, well, what resources are you bringing to actually make it work that maybe were not included in the other product? You want to develop your own workarounds. This is, this is vital. Again, once you're getting a result, the rest of this is going to be very academic. Probably the most important thing is to start getting a result. When you do that, you're going to start developing your own workarounds, your own shortcuts. You want to start thinking about things like designing your own software to answer your questions for your business. Maybe your business has a particular way of which you do things. You want to start thinking about, well, how can you design something that will answer your question, that will help you to accomplish your goals? Because that software is actually going to be sellable when you develop it yourself. Now, we're also going to want to have proof. So at every stage at which we're doing anything, in this process, we want to take a step and document everything that we're doing. We want to make sure whether we keep it in a journal, whether we keep it in a Google Doc, whatever we're doing, we want to make sure that every little step that we're taking, we are noting it down because this is actually going to be the basis for our product. This is going to make for great case studies. And in some cases, a case study is sellable all by itself. It's going to make for very easy info product creation when you actually have to go back over what it is that you did. And it also helps you to know how to reproduce the results, how to teach people how they can get the same result that you did from the beginning. 
You want to document conditions. You want to document the time of day that you're doing, the taking the steps that you're taking. You want to document the demographics. Document anything that you think of that could be a variable. It could be a vital thing that you can point out and a vital angle in your sales copy. Now, finally, in this video, we want to go over this word that we're calling plug. And basically, we're talking about creating a video testimonial for the vendor. So you you were able to gain this insight because you actually got a product, you used it, and it actually worked for you. So you're going to start thinking about how you can make the vendor look good. Put it on YouTube. Um, you want to take it then from YouTube and then share it on social media. When you do that, make sure that you're tagging the individuals that are involved. Contact them and then make them aware of how you're promoting them and their product and how it worked. Transcribe the testimonial and then make it available, whether or not it's online. So make sure that everything that this person did, that you put it out there, that you make sure it's available in all forms and everybody can read it, and especially the vendor. And this is going to actually help you to be able to bridge the gap between an introduction and actually having someone who would be willing and open to you and promoting your product when it is ready. Okay, now we're going to go over the rest of the seven P's in the next video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we're going to start with the second part of the seven P's, and we're starting with the avenue of profit. And basically, the first part of the profit section, we want to see something through until it already gets a result, and we've talked about that in a previous video. So we want to start with that as the premise of creating our product, the result. And then once we get a result, of course, we're going to be developing our own secret method, our own unique path to actually getting a profit and we're going to be able to do this whether or not we're talking about an information product we want to make sure that the information that we're giving is going to be our direct path so again the documentation is important if we're going to be taking PLR and we're going to be doing it now obviously typically we're not going to be reselling it as PLR but we can sell it as our unique product again if we have our own unique method and way of being able to process what it is that people need to do and of course if we're going to create our own software which automates the process now the second part of this uh, is whether or not we're going to be able to reproduce the results and that's where the result comes in so can we on demand continue to produce the same result consistently over and over and over again with our method or whatever it is that we're going to be delivering when we actually make the sale of course, what's going to be of interest to internet marketers is going to be whether or not we can scale it. I mean, we don't want to give something that people are going to have to spend all their time and effort in order to make work. We want them to be able to either outsource the process or we want them to be able to use paid advertising or some way of them being able to scale it up so that if they don't necessarily have time to really make it big, that they can't. This is going to be a key selling point when we get ready to actually write our copy. And of course, we start then talking about the actual product. We are going to then create our product. That means getting our sales page together and making sure that our product is ready for sale. And when we do that, we're going to be using our documentation. So whatever it is that we did in terms of our product, that is really going to be the core purpose or the core part of our product. The most important aspect of our sales copy is going to be the fact that we were able to get this result over and over again, and we can prove it. We're going to be able to prove it with our result. And in some cases, if we can actually get people to take our product, use it, and get the same results, this is going to be a fantastic way of being able to put social proof on our sales page. Now, if possible, we want to put it on the same affiliate network that the vendor is on because again we want to have that relatability and we actually are going to want them to be willing and we want it to be easy for them to promote and then you know one thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure that we're purchasing their product we want to make that as part of our method we want to put that in our product that people need to get the core method from the actual vendor and again all this does is this really kind of helps us to build that relationship with the vendor make them more open to promoting our product when they're ready 
And of course, that is the last part of the method. We are actually going to want someone to promote our product. We're going to ask the vendor uh, to promote our product naturally. And we're going to get our sales page ready. We're going to host it on MunchEye. We're going to get everything together and make sure that anything that is a question that has already been answered everything that we can possibly do to make it easy for someone to promote again we are going to want to make sure that if we have a JV page it looks like all the other JV pages so if the other JV pages have swipes if the other JV pages have bonuses or bonus pages we want to have those things to one hours we want to make it easy for people to promote and then we're going to approach the vendor and ask them to promote our product. It's pretty much going to be that simple. We want uh, to apply for an affiliate link to their product and let them know that their product is part of our package. Again, we want to make this as enticing as we can to the vendor in order for them to promote our product. Okay, so that is the end of the 7P method of taking your purchases and turning them into your own products. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video.